the graphic representation off my right in reference to Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, as well as multiple sclerosis is incredible. An incredible hypothetical benefit in reference to a common biomass compound, spirulina. In fact, so common, it represents over one third of the Earth's biomass, yet yields incredibly, incredible neuroprotective effects as well as potentially neuroregenerative effects in reference to particular pathologies or diseases. In this case, as we look at the graphic here, we are looking at Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and multiple sclerosis, but you'll quickly find that this is just literally the tip of the iceberg. No analogy in reference to the graphic itself, but you get the point. So what researchers then set out to do is they want to see exactly how spirulina or the components of spirulina may yield benefits in reference to these particular elements. Surely it must pass the blood brain barrier. So what they did is they collected studies which actually addressed that in regard to spirulina. And many of these are animal studies, but it gives you a good example of the potential in spirulina and getting its components a pass the BBB or blood brain barrier. So amazing, just the same. So with that in mind, let's get into the study. Now, there is so much territory in reference to the study. There's no possible way it can be done or be given justice in just reviewing it in just a few brief minutes. So keep in mind, the link will be there for you to explore and delve into it on your own. And I guarantee when you look at this particular study and what the researchers uh, accumulated in regard to this observational data, it is just miraculous. So let us begin as follows. Beneficial effects of spirulina consumption on brain health. Spirulina is a microscopic filamentous cyanobacterium that grows in alkaline water bodies. It is extensively utilized in nutraceutical food supplement all over the world due to its high levels of functional compounds such as phycocyanins, phenols, polysaccharides with anti-inflammatory antioxidants, immunomodulating properties both in vivo and vitro. Several scientific publications have suggested its positive effects in various pathologies such as cardiovascular disease, hypercholesterolemia, hypercalcemia, obesity, hypertension, tumors, and inflammatory diseases. Lately, Different studies have demonstrated the neuroprotective role of spirulina on the development of the neural symptom, symptom, system. Senility in a number of pathological conditions, including neurological and neurodegenerative diseases. This review focuses on the role of spirulina in the brain, highlighting how it exerts its beneficial anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects acting on the glial cell activation and in the prevention of glial glial, prevention and or a progression of neurodegenerative diseases, in particular Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and multiple sclerosis, in reference to the graphic we showed prior. Due to these properties, spirulina could be considered a natural drug, as well as an abundant food. So let's delve a little bit into the history of it, do the introduction, and then we'll quickly move to the conclusion, and then have the links for you to explore on your own, to proceed. Spirulina is undifferentiated microscopic filamentous spiral shaped cyanobacterium, blue green al alga that is capable of growing naturally in alkaline and saline environments, saline, 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 saline environments, and doubles its biomass every two to five days. So think about that as far as the global population and an incredible, incredible uh, potential food source. Soil and green type analogy, per se. Spirulina is the name utilized to describe mainly two species of cyanobacteria, the spirulina platensis and spirulina maxima. For centuries, Aztec and Maya civilizations used spirulina as a primary food source. Nowadays, it is considered safe for human consumption, having very low toxicity. It represents more than 30% of the world's production of microalgae biomass. It is cultivated worldwide as a fundamental ingredient in many nutraceutical formulations or as food. In 1996, the World Health Organization declared spirulina the best food for the future, thanks to the scientific research that reported its high content of proteins and natural vitamins. Why the best food of the future? To delve in deeper, here we go. The protein content of spirulina varies between 60 and 70% in its dry weight. 
And the most important proteins for food applications are the phycobiloproteins, namely phycocyanin and allophycocyanin, which have the same chromophore group as phycoerythrin. Phytochemical, mostly represented as phycocyanin, a deep blue colored protein due to the open tetrapole, chromophore, and phycocyabilin, PCB, not to be confused with the plastic one. Covently joined to the apoprotein and able to harvest light energy that the organism uses to drive ATP production. In addition, spirulina contains polysaccharides, polyunsaturated fatty acids, vitamins, especially B vitamins, carotenoids, as well as several minimal, minimals, 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 <laughs> minerals such as sodium, potassium, calcium, iron, manganese, selenium, magnesium, and zinc. Now we move to conclusion. Again, we're going through this briefly. I'm not going to be able to do it justice. That's why I'm going to have the link for you to follow on your own to proceed. This review summarizes the latest findings of the neuroprotective role of spirulina, its positive effects on the glial, glial cell activation, do both pronunciations to make everyone happy. On and on the treatment of the neurogenic diseases, except I'll mispronounce that. In particular, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and multiple sclerosis. Several lines of evidence testify to its peculiar neuroprotection mechanisms. It makes it sound mysterious. But as we looked at the graphic prior, it happens to proceed, including antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activities in the brain parachema. Parachema, parachema which makes spirulina a potential pharmacological agent in the prevention and treatment of these neurological disorders. However, despite the numerous and encouraging scientific evidence, both in vitro and in vivo, additional studies are needed to clarify the mechanisms of action of spirulina. But needless to say, just the same. When you look at that data in reference to basically all the potential benefits yielded by spirulina, Besides being over 30% of the world's biomass and basically reproducing itself every two to five days, you have an incredible, incredible nutrient-based tool provided by nature for us that basically can solve many of the world's challenges right under our nose. But still just the same when looking at Parkinson's disease, we're looking at Alzheimer's, we're looking at multiple sclerosis, and the potential benefit yielded by the components of spirulina, which do appear to pass the blood brain barrier. Let us just help as many people as we possibly can and yield greater, greater studies that can validate this information as time moves forward. Again, we have to give gratitude to the researchers and as well too, I'm always humbled that you listen and I'm always, always, again, Hope this information helps as many people as possible and gratitude. And I'll see you all once again next week. Catch you next time. Bye.